Hi everyone, it's Justin from Main Man Bassing. Today I'm going to review what, in my opinion, I think are the best swim baits on the market. That's the Spro BBZ1 6 inch swim bait. Just an amazing lure, designed by Bill Simmental. It's a Hall of Fame angler. The, the craftsmanship that is are put into these lures are pretty amazing and you know what you can do with these are just it's pretty incredible actually I'll have a link for them below where you can pick them up on Amazon they range I think from like about twenty five to thirty dollars depending on which model you get there's the floater the slow sink which sinks one foot every three seconds and then the fast sink which falls at a rate of one foot per second. These things are just so cool. The like this is the yellow of the wicked perch. In the water, these colors are electric if there's sunlight. It just just unbelievable. Really. It's really like really, really cool. I'll, I just just a really amazing bait. Uh, when you when the slow sink when you cast the slow sink version and it lands in the water it falls completely horizontal it doesn't like nose dive down to the bottom and sit like that it doesn't like doesn't fall all crooked it flows it falls completely horizontal and it just rests on the bottom it's so cool the the action it's a hard body, it's segmented. You have your Gamagatsu hooks. It's the tail's rubber, you know, rubber tail. Uh, the action in the water, just incredible. Here's, it's hard to see. You have to, I apologize for my footage. It's, the footage is of me catching fish is bad. It's before I knew what I was doing. Uh, as far as as far as filming goes, but you can see it's just just really awesome. The slow sink it falls one foot every three seconds, and you can just fish it so slow. I mean, you can really really at at like you know I think these are good for up to ten twelve feet, maybe fifteen feet if you have the patience. Uh, fifteen feet you'd have to wait for forty five seconds for it to fall to the bottom. But you can just fish this so slow, and even though you, I mean, you barely turn that that handle, and it'll that tail will kick back and forth no matter how slow you're fishing it. It, it it's just really cool. And um, the fast sink, when the fast sink, when you cast that, that falls at one foot per second. It'll swirl. Oh, I'm trying not to hurt myself here. It won't fall horizontally. It'll it'll swirl. It'll spiral down and swirl down to the bottom. It's so cool with the nose, uh, the nose, uh, you know, lower than the tail, and then it'll just rest on the bottom. Just really cool. You can do directional changes with it. So I mean, with the floater, you could like walk it if you wanted to. You could walk it on the top. You could dead stick it. You could. The floater's cool, even, and, and either of I them, mean, you can bang them off structure, dock edges, you know, dock pilings and things like that. Really, really cool. Um, and if, like, you know, a lot of times, like I, when you cast, uh, there's a lot of the fish a lot of area, surface area, for the fish to bite and not catch the hook. Uh, I'll see a fish, a fish a lot of times, it'll come right up and they'll like, because you're fishing it so slow and the fish are tracking it really slow, they'll come right up and just bite the side of it, you know, and you, you it's hard to get a hook set with that. But a lot of, you know, so, but if you don't, if they're not attacking it, it, it's a oh, great surge bait. I uh, just phenomenal. Like I'm not joking. Like it, it. Just I'm sort of blown away by how how many track how many fish track this this bait. Uh, so many times I've seen 
when I cast out and I'm reeling in slow, I'll see fish, like, you know, 16-inch bass, like, I'll see six or seven of them coming from all different directions and tracking that bass. So it's not like a school. It's not like I found a school and the school's tracking it together. It's pulling, Bill Simmental calls it daisy chaining. And it'll, if you, so if you're up shallow and you cast out deep and you bring it up, uphill, it'll pull bass off all their spots, off all their structure that they're holding to. It'll pull them and they'll follow it. So even if the bass doesn't hit it, hit it or attack it, they will track it, like 100% guaranteed. <laughs> they will track this bait, and you can then you can see. I mean, because you can get it's heavier, uh, so you can get a good cast, and then determine if there are bass in that area or not. As far as your setup goes, you want. I'll link in a video of Bill Simmental on his latest recommendations for a setup for these things, but, you know, I throw it with a Daiwa Tatula HD 200. I use 18 pound mono. And your, the, the rod you want is, I, you want, if you're not gonna buy his, if you're not gonna listen to Bill Simtel's recommendation or you have setups at home, you, you want a rod with, where the handle's not too short and it's not too long. Because you can do, directional changes with these but you can do when these things are swimming if you if you like rip your or like like almost like walking the dog where you like snap your line your rod down it, it'll come around and do 180 degrees so it's really cool so it'll you pull your rod down and it'll flash out and flare like that and actually turn around completely I've gotten it to do I've actually gotten it to do 360s uh, you can swim it in, in circles, which is really cool. And it, and what it'll do is when you uh, when you're ripping it down, it'll you get a lot of flash and flare, and the bait appears to turn around and look at whatever's tracking it. But the, if your if the handle of your rod is too long, you won't be able to rip down. It'll get caught in your arm, and if it's too short. You can catch some big bass with these. These are gonna, you'll catch any, any, you know, a bass as big as it or a lot bigger. I've seen guys pulling up 15 pound stripers with these. So, and muskie will hit this too, and pike will hit this. So, you, you, you need, if it's too short, you, and you wanna sweep it too. Like, you don't wanna, it's not a, it's not a flipping, you know, it's not a, it's not a jig, you're not ripping it up. You want to sweep it across. So if that handle's too short, it becomes really difficult to sweep and get and maximize that uh, that pressure in the hook set. So that you know, keep that in mind when you're when you're you with your setup that you're using for it. Uh, the floater is two ounces, the slow sink is two and a quarter ounces. And the fast sink is two and a half ounces. So again, with your setups, your your reel that you use, I'll link up my uh, the Tatula 200 HD if you want that, because I can handle all of this. Uh, it's, a, it's a good speed. You, uh, you need a reel that can handle that type of weight. Though it's pretty heavy. I mean, two and a half ounces. It's yeah, you know, it's it's a for bass fishing. That's sort of. You know, a lot of people think that's too heavy, but it's not. Um, so you need a reel that can handle that. You want a, a, an average to deeper size spool because you're going to be casting pretty far. That's, you know, the, these are basically horizontal presentations covering a lot of water. You can go down and, you know, on a 300 foot shore, you could cover that. If you cast diagonally from shallow to deeper water, Basically, in three casts, you could cover that the 300 feet of shore, and you can determine if the if it's if it's holding bass or not. So, you'd want a spool that can a deeper spool, you know, stronger gear ratios that can that can handle throwing out two and a half pounds or two and a half ounces. 
the the uh, the Tatula HD 200 is I haven't caught many bass with it, so but it, it can handle throwing these at least. And then you just need 18 pound 18 pound mono, and uh, you know like a heavier stick. You want a thicker stick. It, you don't want it soft. You I I would do heavy. I think I think at the bare at the least you'd want medium heavy, but I, I would probably go heavy. I mentioned earlier the the rate. You know this falls one foot every three seconds. So if you're like looking on your sonar, like let's say you're in ten feet of water or twelve feet of water, fifteen feet of water, and you see that there's a grass line that comes up to uh, you know, so it ends at six, so there's from the top of the grass line to the top of the water, there's six feet. Well, you know, you need this, you need to wait, so you, you need it to fall for six feet, and one every three seconds, so you'd cast this out, you count to 18 seconds, and you know when you're bringing it in that this, the lure is going to swim right above the brush line, right on the top of the brush line. And uh, hopefully, even come into contact with the brush line and uh, attract fish. Just really, uh, I mean, it's really, and you can just fish it so slow. So, you, like, I, I do it all the time. I, I know, like, from the top of the water to the top of the brush line is like four feet, right? I know I need to wait 12 seconds. So, I'll cast out, I'll count to 12, and then I'll pull it along. I'll re retrieve it, and I know I'm swimming right over the top of that brush line. Uh, just, you know, the craftsmanship is just, and, and you can fish it so slow. That's the thing, it's like, I mean, you can just keep it there forever and, and attract as many fish as possible and pull them off their stru structure and cover. And then you can, when you get near structure, uh, you can rip it and it'll do directional changes. So, just so many good things to say about this bait really they it's an incredible search bait that's I almost think that's really sort of the value I mean you do catch a lot of bass with it but you can cover like I said before seriously a 300 foot bank you can make three different casts and determine if it's holding bass or not if the bass track it then you know you can park that area on your sonar or just remember that that area holds bass and then you could look for structure and cover like within that area and then you could use different presentations once you once you found the bait once you found the bass so just really uh, an incredible tool that covers a lot of water it's very effective at catching bass and even more effective at in my opinion about finding bass um, it is $25, 25 to $30, but as long as you, I basically retie every two bass I catch with it, I retie. And as long as you retie, you know, unless if, if I caught one bass and it was a huge fight and it was coming through a brush or, you know, something that could have nicked a line, I'll obviously retie it right there. But as long as you retie, you're always going to have these, the, the fins will fall off eventually especially when bass are hammering it, especially when you've caught like 20 bass, you know, 20 big bass, these fins will pop out, but you can buy replacements. Um, and interestingly, I've never gotten, the, I've never lost one of these. I've gotten them caught all the time, but they somehow always come out. Same with all my throw products, so just really, really, really great uh, lure that I think you'll really enjoy as long as you have the right setup for it. That's my review. Hope you like it. Check that link below where you can pick it up on Amazon. Make sure you have a good setup. Hope you liked it. Hope it gave you a good perspective. I know you're gonna love this bass as long as you or this this lure as long as you have the right setup for it. You'll you'll do really well with it. So thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Hope you got a good perspective and I hope you catch a real big bass. Thanks.